So my first interaction with this theatre um, would have been because of my nana's cafe, Connie's cafe. I think when, when in the old build, terraced houses on each side of the of the, of the theatre, the main building, and my nana's cafe was on the end. So my first interaction would have been seeing the signed photos in my nana's caf from all the acts that I played here over the years and recognizing children's performers within those uh, within those photos and thinking, wow, they've been in my Nana's Cafe. Um, but my first interaction in the theater was, was pantomime. And I, 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 I can't remember how old I was, I, um, but I know it was, I was very, very young because I remember the back of the seat being sort of there and we were in the circle um, and all I remember, my vivid memory of it, is me not wanting to leave the theatre in the interval. Me wanting to stay in that seat in the interval. So I was clearly fascinated. And my mother, and I think it was my sister, went, you know, to get drinks and sweets and stuff. And probably my mum had a cigarette. And I just stayed put. And they didn't make it back in time for the second half, the very beginning of the second half. And I remember this performer on stage with a puppet. And I remember laughing, laughing my head off on my own with a couple of empty seats either side of me. And this woman behind me sort of glancing back and this woman behind beaming at me, laughing at this act. And that's, that's my overriding, vivid, very, very first memory of theater in any capacity. But then, of course, I got interested in dance and the Northern Ballet Theatre Company, they came to Swansea with a Midsummer Night's Dream to the Grand Theatre here on this stage. And they needed they needed a boy to play the Egyptian prince. And I was in primary school at this stage. So I was probably about, you know, six and a half, seven years old, something like that. And uh, because I did ballet at the school after school hours with my with my then ballet teacher Pamela Miller who's still going today um I think I was the only boy in Swansea who was doing ballet so <laughs> they didn't really have a choice um but I think they were pleasantly surprised by my kind of natural affinity with the stage because of the things I've just spoken about and that memory of me do, working with that professional company being on this stage for the first time and coming out and remembering how vast everything was, because I was only about that high, and just how vast everything was. And then on the stage and, and looking out and seeing the sort of glint of spectacles in the darkness and, and, and this incredible energy coming from the, from, the, from the audience. And it was a memory that has stayed with me to this day and is the whole reason why I do what I do because it's an indescribable feeling of connection when you're on a stage um, and one that I'm absolutely addicted to so following my uh, my time here on the stage with the Northern Ballet Theatre Company I, I seriously got the bug so I engaged with Gendros Amateur Operatic Society and we did Oliver here on the stage um, with uh, Catherine Zeta Jones and uh, a load of people I'm still in touch with today. That was an incredible experience. And then about a year later, I did half a sixpence here at the Grand. So, you know, those three experiences cemented my love of theatre, if you like. So after that experience with the um, Northern Ballet Theatre Company, coupled with the fact that I'm dyslexic, and I, this, we're talking the 70s here, right? So I was in the bottom classes. So I didn't have much academic promise. But I knew I liked to dance because ballet followed on from disco. In the 70s, disco was all the rage. And I used to go to Dale and Lissa's disco dancing classes on the high street. And, um, and I, I, just, I just, I could do it. It was something that I found very natural, dance. So it was the first thing that I was any good at and the first thing that I got any real positive attention for. Um, so... I knew I wanted to do it because I was like, well, I can't do anything else. This is what I can do. So by the, by, by the age of 12, bearing in mind, you know, disco led on to ballet and I was getting quite good at ballet by that, by that point, I wanted to go to London and train. Um, 
uh, but I but we didn't have any money. I was in living in, on the bottom end of Port Mead Estate. My mother was a single parent at a time, zero income family, no money. The then council, West Glamorgan County Council, which is now Swansea Council, they didn't give grants to people under under the age of sixteen. So um, we managed to strong arm the the arts council into giving me a grant, which is another story for another time. But basically, we. Um, in a nutshell, we uh, we flash mobbed the Arts Council before flash mob was even a thing. And, um, you know, I turn up with a tape recorder and a sweeping brush, start sweeping around them, press play, start sweeping around them and then break into dance. So by the time by the time it came to my application for a full grant, I think they were like, give this kid a grant because then he can stop f um, bombarding us. So they gave me a full grant and I... I've always been, you know, it's the, it's the very reason why I had a career is because they gave me that financial assistance. So I've always wanted to give back to Swansea for that reason. Um, so following my training, the grant covered me in a school called the Erdang Academy, which was then in Covent Garden. It was uh, the Erdang Academy of Ballet and Performing Arts. And I stayed in that school from the age of 12 right up until I was 17, 18 years old. And then in my final year as a student, I auditioned for the stage school of Starlight Express, which was like, you know, the kind of preliminary uh, stage. If you if you show promise, you got into the stage school, uh, into the skate school story. Um, if you showed promise, you got into the skate school. And then if you could learn to dance on your skates, then you had a good chance of getting into the actual musical. So loved the skate school, uh, learned to dance on my skates and then got into Starlight Express then at the end of it for the role of flat top. And I was I, I, I played the role of flat top for two years in the West End. And then I was like, OK, I've learned to sing a bit better from doing all the chorus work eight times a week. So I'm going to auditioned to be an understudy for one of the leading roles, which was Electra. So I auditioned to be an understudy and I ended up getting the role. So um, right place, right time. Uh, and so then I played Electra for two years, the, uh, one of the leading roles. And that really gave me my schooling in theatre. Those four years in the West End really kind of cemented everything for me. So after my time in the West End, I was in a band called Puppy Fat for, for a little while. We played the Ronnie Scott's Jazz Cafe, things like that. Did really well. Couldn't write any songs, though. Weren't destined to be um, a pop band or anything. Uh, and I, was, I got really interested in acting during that time and started doing bits and bobs. And so an acting career followed that. Uh, and then, you know, I've done a lot of uh, television and theatre and film and I've had a, a really great career. Um, so following... Following that that varied career, I you know, like I said earlier on, I've always wanted to give back to Swansea, and I always knew that I would come home to Swansea. But then, it took the death of my mother. She died in in September 2020 for me to realise that life's too short for like one day I'm going to move back home. And within uh, a few months of my mother passing away, we'd found a house, and by May the following year we'd moved home, and I immediately got to work really you know I knew I wanted to give back and I knew what I wanted to do um, and, and that that is in a nutshell is I wanted to help add to the incredibly vibrant theatre scene here in Swansea I wanted to kind of add to that and create a kind of a world-class producing house within the city so I met up with Rob Stewart, the, the leader of the council, and I told him, I was like, you know, why, why don't we have that? We've got incredible things like Lighthouse Theatre Company, Volcano, Fluellen here. Um, we've got some incredible companies here, but we don't have a producing house that does world-class theatre through the Swansea lens specifically, creating work f just for Swansea that happens to be world-class and, and has a wider audience because it's world-class. And he agreed with me, and, and um, a meeting with, Tracy McNulty, the head of cultural services here in Swansea, and councillor Robert Francis Davis quickly followed at the Guildhall. And me and Steve Balsamo uh, went to meet them because I collated my dream team at that t at that stage. I always knew who I wanted to work with, and that's Steve Balsamo, um, 
Michelle McTurnan and Christian Patterson and thankfully they said yes so I had my team on board and me and Steve went to the Guildhall and had a meeting with Tracy and it was just serendipitous really because what we pitched then that day she had she has wanted for this the this theatre the Grand Theatre for a long time so right place right time right pitch and we came out of that meeting flawed because I knew we wanted to create a producing house in Swansea but just the thought at that stage of it being the Grand Theatre was, it was bonkers. It was bonkers. I mean, we were literally fall, falling over ourselves out when we came out of that meeting. We were buzzing. And, um, and we jumped on it and, and we made it work. And we made it work in record time, really. So within, by the end of the year, we were already in the theatre. And by January, we were, we were launching behind the scenes and... On February the 15th, we launched officially and it's an incredibly exciting time for us. So looking forward, my life is going to be this theatre. So I've taken a sabbatical from acting uh, in that I'm, I'm not going to be a job in acting anymore. If I get the urge, I can always, you know, engage in this theatre. But I want, I, like I said, I, I just want to give back and I want to enable work. And I want to bring people together. I want to bring all the world-class talent that is in this city or has gone elsewhere to work. I want to bring them back to this theatre. And I want to contribute to the theatre scene. Um, that's on a personal level. And I know that Steve and Michelle and Christian feel the same. So together as Grand Ambition, the future is bright. Work through the Swansea lens, reflecting its people on stage. I mean, I was, I was in the market the other day and I was just thinking, this place is incredible. When we talk about the Swansea lens, that's a prime example of what you see when you look through the Swansea lens. If you lifted the lid off of the market and looked in at all the different lives and the stories in there, there's, there's theatre going on in that, in that place. Um, so we're going to be very unapologetic about it being Swansea stories reflecting Swansea people. And our mission is to... You see, this, this city is a very loyal city. We know that because of the loyalty to our football club. They go week in, week out. Rain, snow, hail, sunshine. Good performances, bad performances. They are there week in week out and all we've got to do is get our city thinking thinking about our theatre in the same way sometimes you're going to come here and it's going to blow your mind sometimes you're going to come here and go well i enjoyed it but it wasn't really my thing but you're going to keep coming back because this is your theatre and this is it, it really is your theatre it belongs to you so we want to get the, the city excited about coming to this theatre and it being theirs and being their home and where they can see their lives reflected on stage and and come to the theatre and think, oh my God, that's my mother or that's my husband or oh, that's, their, that's my kids or, you know, that's my work friend or, you know. We're very, we're very passionate about reflecting the culture here, the incredible, rich cultural heritage. We want to reflect that. We just want to amplify it and tell its stories. And it's really exciting. And our community outreach, we want to, for genuine pathways from the entire community to this stage. You know, me, Birch Grove, born in mind, Birch Grove, blind and ice boy, right? I, I've engaged with this theatre, but what I know is, is that you have to go into these communities and tell them that it's their theatre and make them feel welcome and engage these people with material that reflects who they are. So I'm excited about going into communities where I grew up and inspiring the next generation of, of performers and actors and writers and musicians and as well as nurturing the artists that are already established, you know, and, and we're talking about supporting people at any stage and any age any age and any stage of their career we're going to support them so it's just it's just all really exciting and 
I come here every day to work and that is a privilege and an honor and I just wake up smiling every day and I, and, and I mean that genuinely what a place